was that? That <laughs> wasn't Wayne Newton, that's for sure, Harry. Why don't you have a seat here? Let me tell you a story. I was a small boy. My father took me to a Halloween carnival, and there a gnarled old gypsy crone recited an incantation to me that's stayed with me, lo, these, these many, many years. And, Harry, it goes something like this. When tis full moon night on all Hallows' feast, the time has come to hunt the beast. But bring your weapons on your hunting trips, or else a werewolf will rip off your lips. And carry a silver bullet. Tis a mighty charm to keep the werewolf from tearing off your arm. And beware of stumbling on the slippery grass, because a werewolf will take a bite of your leg. Hey, don't look now, Steve, but I think Big Hams Johnson is trying to get your attention. Harry, the swamp gas is starting to get to us. I think we'd better go up to that house on the hill we passed, and you can introduce the Dick Butkus piece from... That sounds good to me. Doug Scales Body Shop is pleased to announce the addition... What is this place? It's definitely not a Burger King, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, this guy looks like he spent an afternoon playing against Dick Butkus. Dick Butkus was the most frightening linebacker to ever play pro football. The way he tackled, he turned every stadium into a torture chamber. You know, I can actually feel Butkus' presence. Opposing teams try to stop him with offensive line, but what they really needed was an exorcist. So I guess what you're trying to say, Harry, is Dick Butkus was pretty scary, huh? Scarier than any werewolf. You couldn't ask for a more perfect subject for Halloween than the terrifying and terrific monster of the midway, Dick Butkus. I remember walking up to the line of scrimmage and I looked to the left and started calling a signal and looked to the right and started calling the rest of the signal and I looked straight ahead. Here's the man that you fear most in football staring you right in the face. What he said to me, I can't repeat, the censors would have a ball. And immediately my voice kind of quivered and started cracking. He was the greatest intimidator that ever played football. I don't know how good a football player was. He scared the hell out of people long. He told me he was gonna kick my you know what? <laughs> the first time I ever played against him, a rookie year. Dick was, was an animal. I called him a maniac, a stone maniac. He's the kind of linebacker that when he hit our backs, our back would go back in the huddle, he'd be talking out his ear hole. He'd want to know who was supposed to block that crazy sucker. Before you could begin to try to block on Dick, you had to overcome the mystique. And uh, he didn't appreciate this, but I said it was almost like an odor. He exuded a kind of a presence. He tried to hurt you. You know, he was just so competitive you know, not only did he not want you to gain a yard, he didn't want you to gain an inch. You know, as soon as you had that football, you were the enemy. played football with a religious fervor, with an unrelenting obsession not only to excel, but to dominate and demoralize. Dick was not satisfied with just an ordinary tackle. He had to hit you, pick you up, drive you, and grind you into the ground. Dick Butkus football was never a game, but a street fight. A place for all out, no holds barred warfare. He was an animal, and he was a 
well-conditioned animal, and every time he hit you, he tried to put you in the cemetery, not the hospital. Marcus was the most destructive defender in the game. And the NFL is filled with horror stories of tough men who crossed him. He knocked out Elsie Greenwood on a, on a punt. I remember, and he knocked out Warren Banks, and he was a full back, back a fullback we had, but a good special teams player. And I remember Warren stood on the sideline crazy. says, I don't know who I am. Because <laughs> Buck is a blind side and just K on him. For Dick to run a 100 yard dash, it'd take him three days. But I want to tell you something from that middle linebacker. 20 yards this way, 20 yards that way, 20 yards that way. I mean, nobody, nobody was quicker than he was. He made a lot of interceptions. If he was told in pass defenses to be in a certain area, I mean, he was there. He had great hands. The man was uh, unbelievable. His whole damn life was football. Forget about it. Wasn't driving a pretty car. It wasn't going to the local bar and pounding your chest, I'm the greatest. It was the opposite. Uh, you know, I'm really not the tough, macho guy that was only during the game. And uh, no matter how hard you try to explain that, it, sure you were, you know. <laughs> so He's basically a pain in the ass. You know, again, I know him, and uh, he's got a personality like a fried lobster. It was horrifying playing against him because he can intimidate literally an entire offensive team, and I mean good teams. We had a rookie center uh, that was playing against him for the first time, and of course, you remember, Buck has grunted a lot and growled a lot when he was back up the line, and we sent this rookie center in to, to play for us, and the first time he came off, his eyes were about like this. He, he couldn't believe what he was hearing from Buckus. Buckus had him intimidated. He hadn't even blocked him yet. Buckus dominated a game the way no other player ever has. He dominated officials. He'd take the ball away from the guy after the play and shake it in the official's face, and the official would point it their way. It was awesome. I was working, and Buckus came up to me, and he started to wave his finger at me. I sort of smiled at him and said, Buckus, I said, don't wave your finger at me. I said, I'll bite your head off. He looked at me and said, well, if you bite my head off, you'll have more brains in your stomach than you will have in your head. From his personality to the impact of his tackles, everything Dick Butkus did was memorable. Although he played on only two winning teams, he did not lower his standards to fit the company. He was Moby Dick in a goldfish bowl. His nine-year career stands apart as the single most sustained work of devastation ever committed on a football field by anyone, anywhere, anytime. To talk about him is to drain the vocabulary of superlatives. Well, the only thing I can say about the great Dick Butkus, I'll say it in a, in a, in a poem. Roses are red and violets are blue. If you've got any sense, you'll keep Butkus away from you. Sharp Electronics pre on September 27, 1964, the Baltimore Colts crushed the Chicago Bears 52 to nothing for the most lopsided defeat in Bears history. Bad as this thrashing was, this is not considered to be the biggest blight in Chicago's proud history in the NFL. Another earlier defeat is even more painful. What was the most humiliating loss in Bears history? Back with the answer after this message loss in Bears history occurred in 1967 in a preseason game of all places when the AFL Chiefs clobbered the NFL Bears. We're being 66 to 24 and Butkus, you know, he looked at me and he'd be cursing, you know, 
And he says, I know you don't give a damn about us. He says, that's evident by the score. He says, but you're trying to kill that horse that circles the field every time you score a touchdown. And that's what I said afterwards. I said, boy, we almost killed that damn horse because it, you know, it had to ride around that stadium. It was hot and it was shy. It was foaming. And that poor Indian, that <laughs> he almost slid off going around the corners. The Bears were in somewhat of a lather themselves as they became one of the first NFL teams to lose a game to a squad from the AFL. A major propaganda victory for the new league and a disaster for the Chicago Bears. Boy, that Dick Butkus. Watching him is enough to make your hair stand on end. Boy, you weren't kidding, Harry. That was scary stuff. Whew. And there's more. Butkus isn't through haunting us yet. Well, you know, all this werewolf hunting, it's made me tired. I'm, I'm going to take a nap in here. Ah, you're a scaredy cat. I am not. Hard to. I am not. Yes, you are. I can't really blame you. Oh. Butkus put fear into a lot of people, especially those who played against him. To this day, they describe Butkus in terms best suited for a night when the moon is full. The wolves are howling. And the bat wings are flapping. A night just like this. So, sleep tight, Steve, if you dare. <laughs> People always ask me the difference to compare Butkus with, with Nobis, for example. And uh, the best way to do that, I guess, is to say that Nobis was a man who walked like a bear, and Butkus was a bear who walked like a man. He was... Uh, the most unique defensive player that I ever saw come into professional football. The first year that he began to play, he began to do things to runners that no one had ever done before. In that he was uh, tackling these guys with one hand and stripping them with the other, stripping them of the ball. I've never seen any linebacker in professional football before or since who did this. Dick Butkus recovered 25 opponents' fumbles, the second highest total in NFL history. And if records were kept of fumbles forced, he would certainly own the all-time mark. Butkus, uh, he just scared me to death. I didn't know if I could play this game after watching him because the ball would snap, and if he was pursuing, I mean, every word was a cuss word, man. He was growling at me, at him, you know, boy. He was talking all the time out there. He raised more hell on the field and got away with more stuff than any player I ever played against. He'd jump right up over the center and just scream and holler and everything else, and every once in a while he'd go, Hoo! and put a big honker right on the football, right? He'd spit on Tinglehoff's hands or something, you know, and Tinglehoff would be snapping that ball back up to Fran, and he'd be getting a greaser. Nice, sunshiny, bright day, and we were playing, and we'd scored a touchdown, and I got up, and, and the center, you know, puts his hands on the ball, and then he looks between his legs to the holder, and all of a sudden, I, I, I thought he had a downpour out there, you know, and uh, in a nice, clear day, and I look up, and there's Butkus spitting all over my hands. Here we go, Andy. All right, we'll shift to 44 to a 56 stack. Pow! Watch the play action. Let's go. Butkus was a crafty signal caller who utilized methods both extreme and unusual in pursuit of success. It's illegal for a middle linebacker or a single caller to say hut. They can talk and call defensive signals and that, but Dick didn't understand that rule. And uh, he's always saying hut, hut, and, uh, and the ref would warn him, and he said, that's my signal to my linebacker, which is bull****. They don't have any signal like that. Set! Get up! <laughs> He's talking all the time and he and uh, um, laughing and, and carrying on and trying to get you in a conversation and and uh, to disrupt your game is what he's doing. I got a letter supposedly from a doctor, I think, uh, uh, from somewhere and I don't know wherever, but he, he just claimed that if this is the way football is going to be played or something, I'm not going to let my kid play it or whatever. And, uh, and, he, and he signed his name and everything else. So I wrote back to him and I says, well, you know something? 
you doctors, I think I'm going to discourage my wife from watching uh, the, the soaps during the daytime because, boy, you know, you guys are having affairs with the nurses and the patients and everything else, and I just don't want to subject my wife to this because uh, if this is what you guys portray, I don't think it's a very good uh, thing to have my wife watching you like this. He was not the type of guy that you say, we're going to get this loud mouth. No, no, you didn't do that. But before you played him, uh, the first thing you said uh, on your offensive game plan is, hey, how are we going to handle Buckus? And even though he had an intimidating way about him, he also had a way of being in the right place at the right time. He was there many times before the blockers were ready and did a lot of what he did, not only because of the physical attributes, but I think he had a great instinct. He was one of the most instinctive football players I think uh, I've seen on the other side. I would just look into the huddle and, uh, and read their lips or whatever, because uh, like Joe Cap, you could hear the play. And every quarterback would say, you know, okay, red, right, uh, 48, uh, sweep on two. Make sure everybody heard it, including us. <laughs> In 1970, Butkus's knees were damaged so badly that his doctor told him to retire. But the joy of battle was too sharp for anything to spoil his pleasure. He played on for three more years. A wounded grizzly fighting off a pack of vengeful bounty hunters. He had the bad knee and uh, he was just not himself. You know, he, just, he couldn't play, but we killed him anyway, you know. And he was screaming at me, saying, you, you can blank this out you want. You man, so you, you son of a, he said, you cheap shot. The whole game, he's yelling at me, and I just laugh, I'd go out and I'd cut him, you know, I'd blindside him next, I'd, I'd go looking for him. I was going out of my way, I almost get called flags because I wanted to kill him, you know. I still didn't have any pity on him, but the son of a still won the game for him. Philosopher once defined a great man as someone who never reminds us of anyone else. Few athletes can match that criterion, but Dick Butkus is one of them. Butkus retired in 1973, leaving behind a monumental yet simple legacy, as clear and concise as his very name. Butkus is synonymous with uh, football. It's synonymous with uh, hitting, contact, aggressiveness. Uh, uh, he's the best who ever played the position. Dick Butkus is the greatest football player I ever saw. I'm convinced he's the greatest football player that ever lived. Behind by three with 19 seconds left, Minnesota won in the crunch when Leo Lewis stole the game from defender Danny Walters. The winning score was the only pass completion to a Viking wideout all day and it meant victory for Minnesota. I couldn't take another minute in that horrible house. I needed to get back outside where I get some fresh air. Like this swamp? Well, besides, you know, when I was napping, yeah. something bit me. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Yeah, you're probably right.